Hey everyone, in today's episode I'm going to show you how to turn just your standard soda coke bottle and turn it into the cheapest hydroponic setup out there using basically the cracky method um, but I'll show you how to do it and it's super easy. So there's a couple of materials that we're going to use in today's video. One of them is easy, just a plastic bottle. I drink too much Coca-Cola in my house so uh, coke bottle it is for me but you can use any plastic bottle that just uh, you're able to cut open. So you can do it with glass but you need the neck cups with glass that are made to fit the size. So plastic's really good because you don't have to worry about neck cups. The second item that you're going to want to use is just these rock wool um, growing medium uh, things. I, I just got them off eBay, super cheap. Um, I've just started using them so I haven't used too many of them yet. But they're basically rock wool um, which is basically like insulation. So if you have bags of insulation around you can actually cut them up into small little cubes and use them instead which actually works out cheaper if you're doing a lot. Um, but for now I just got these from eBay, super easy. You can get them from lots of cheapy shops. The next thing I'm going to use is these clay balls. Now these clay balls come from eBay as well. You can get them from most uh, growing shops. You can get them from anywhere who does hydro stuff. You could probably pick them up from Bunnings, anywhere like that. Um, definitely you can get them on Amazon, but I got these just off eBay. You're obviously going to be wanting some seeds, so I've just grabbed some cucumber ones for showing you off today. But I've got some lettuce and all that sort of stuff as well that um, I've got some going at the moment, so we'll show you them. But there's a whole array of vegetables that you're able to grow this way. Um, so I'll put a little bit of a list on the side here of some options that you might have but it's really fairly unlimited for a lot of things. Uh, probably your root vegetables are probably one of the few things that you probably need to be in the soil but otherwise uh, we'll give the cucumbers a crack this time because I really want more cucumbers in the garden. The last product that we're going to use that you might want to purchase is some feed. It's windy today. Um, I just got this from Bunnings, it's not very expensive. This is just the feed that I've got. Um, I got this to use for the tomatoes, but it's a fruit and vegetable one, so it's pretty pretty much an all-rounder. Now, you only need to use 20 mil of this, so half a cap uh, with two liters of water, which is far beyond what we're gonna be doing today. So this uh, bottle actually lasts quite a long time, so pretty good. Just as a little note, off the bat, seeds will start germinating with just water, so you actually don't need the feed straight away. Um, but you might want it later on because it's probably going to be wanting something in the water later on that it's going to be sucking up to make sure they grow properly. But straight off the bat, you can germinate with just water. So the first step today is obviously to take off the label because we ain't growing Coca-Cola in here. Um, so we want to take the label off um, and then you're going to cut the top of the bottle off because basically the bottom is going to be where the reservoir of water is and the top bit we're going to flip it over and that's going to be where the seedling is going to grow. I'll show you how that works but for now all you want to do is find a spot about here to cut around and um, be able to pull that off and put it in. Now I use a Stanley knife for this. You might have something better, but I just use a Stanley knife. The trick is that you want to make sure that the widest bit is going to be in that top cap area because when you turn it over, you want it to be able to sit on this bit and not fall in. But if you get a little bit too zealous and you cut it too early and it ends up slipping inside, generally you can fix that really easy by just putting some painter's tape around the edge of the bottom part and then it'll sit real nicely. Here's one that I've done prior. Now you can see that I didn't cut this very nice and neatly. It's jagged as, but that doesn't really matter. Um, I'm sure there's many, many people out there that are much neater than me, and this will probably drive people nuts. I know if Betty was looking at this, she'd probably think that was crazy and want to redo it again. But for me, I know it works, so I'm just going with it. So this bit is going to sit down there, and later on we're going to fill the liquid up here and then the um, plant is going to go in the top here. The next stage after cutting this top bit off is to actually put some holes in it. So you can see here that I've put some holes, let's see if we can get a good vision of it, some holes all around the edges there and I've also put some holes in the top of the lid. Now this is because you want the liquid to be able to come up into it and as the plants grow and the roots get longer you want the liquid to drop down and the roots to actually grow out of these holes and always be stretching down to find the liquid down below. 
you can see here now that I've filled it up with water I've just filled it up enough that the cap is just sitting into it so there's definitely water coming up into that area and that's going to suck up through the rock wheel I've also dampened down the rock wool. Um, I didn't do this the first time and it didn't seem to make too much of a difference, but I've seen other people do it. So I'm going to dampen this off this time before I put a seed in and then I'll pop it into the, the reservoir area. Now these seeds are called long green cucumbers. They're called supermarket cucumbers. So I'm hoping they're fairly much like a continental cucumber because um, they're my favorite. Now I've put the seed into the hole, you might be able to see it there. Um, I was suspicious uh, of whether I should cover that um, and not let so much light in. Um, but I've seen other people do this and they've said that when they've filled that up with more rock wool to cover the light out completely, it's actually made the seed not work out. Um, I don't know if not, not enough air is getting through, that's probably what it is since it's basically insulation and it's made to not let air come and go. Um, so which is good the first time I tried this I didn't do that um, so I'm glad I'm not going to do it in future but what I do is after I put this in I put the clay pebbles on top and I do that in a way that blocks out as much light as possible Now this time I'm going a little bit different to other ones I've done. Uh, this time I've put the rock wool directly in the bottom so it's always going to be touching the liquid and then I've put the clay pebbles on top. In the other ones I've put some clay pebbles down first and then some of the rock wool and then more clay pebbles on top. Um, and it's worked fine but I just wanted to try it just a little bit differently this time and see how it goes. The next step is that I'm just going to take a bit of A4 paper and wrap that around as if it's a label basically but what the main reason is I'm doing this is to block out the light so the liquid in there doesn't actually get direct sunlight so it doesn't grow algae and stuff like that um, so get it, taking away the direct sunlight to the liquid underneath is going to be what saves all that sort of thing from happening. Plus I like to write on it what it is I've put in there and I write down the date that I did it and then I'm writing down how many days it takes uh, usually for the seeds to start showing because I find that fun and this is what it looks like for now now later on you'll be able to keep an eye on how the roots are growing by pulling the lid out and just seeing them growing out there which is a lot of fun Here's some rocket lettuce that I did uh, nine days ago. Now I've written on here the date that I did it and it, I wrote down that it says six to ten days for them to emerge and these ones have emerged. So if I pull this out or if I just tip this over you'll be able to see there yeah, we've got some leaves growing. So that's the rocket lettuce. I don't think we'll see anything uh, roots wise too much um, but you can see here how I went higher on the on the product I didn't shove it quite as far down but it's still in the liquid and the liquid's still sucking up into it so that's growing just fine for now but I'll see if it needed to be down further when I can compare this one and the one we've created today. Here's a recap of the cracky method for those of you who didn't watch our tomato experiment video where we went over this so it's very very simple um, but just quick recap here. So the cracky method is basically a version of hydroponics that doesn't require any air pumps. Instead the plant sits with just the tip of their roots in the nutrient solution and the upper part of the roots exposed to air. As the plant grows it absorbs the water and the roots grow longer as the water level subsides and this ensures that it's always exposed to the perfect amount of both air and nutrient solution. This is pretty similar to another method referred to as deep water culture. And the difference is in that version you'd run an air pump to add an additional level of oxygen into the water. And you'd also replenish the water more often so the roots are further into the water than in the cracky method. And just as another example of a cracky method that we've got going on, we've got these tomatoes growing at the moment. Now these are our first time uh, trying these, um, but it seems to be going pretty well now. It had a few hiccups at the start, but it's starting to take off. But I'll show you what's going on with the roots in this one because this one has a same sort of stuff going on. Uh, instead of in a bottle we've just done this in the painter's bucket that I've cleaned out and we're actually using a net cup uh, to put these in so it sits in a hole in the lid. So you can see that the lids got really dusty from when I made the lawn and it all came in but if I lift this out you can see how the roots 
have been growing down. Now when we first did this the roots were just sticking out of here because I transferred it from a seed tray into the water. Um, but yeah so this bucket was quite full of liquid when we first did it in and the more this sucks it up and uses it the, the levels of the water drop and then the roots get air as well as the liquid feeding it. Now the method we're showing you of growing today is super super good if you're somewhere which doesn't have much space or if you're like us and when we started our gardening journey we were only doing it out of an apartment balcony garden so obviously then you don't have uh, soil in the ground that you're able to do you don't really have much room for raised beds if any room at all and these can be grown even just in a windowsill as long as you've got some sunlight these will do the trick. So I hope today's video helped you out if you were looking for new, easy, cheap ways to start some gardening, particularly in an area where you don't have much space. Um, would love to see it if you've done that yourself. Uh, share down below your stories of giving this sort of thing a try and we'll keep you in the loop of how these things grow throughout the season. See you in the next one guys.